your worry or let's say call it a worry monster is it like uh, uh, you know uh, let's draw a worry monster on the paper can we do that what does a worry monster look like what's the color of the worry monster Or if anybody want to use another different emotion, what does anger look like to you? If anger had a figure, uh, what would it look like to you? Let's draw that image on the paper. Okay. So if anybody is done, can you just show what you've made? I'd like like three people to show me what they've made. Okay. What have you written there? Worry monster. Oh, worry monster. Okay. Anybody else uh, who would like to show what their more worry monster looks like? Okay. Let me just see. Okay, I can see Amarnath also showing. The worry monster. I can see Techno also drew something. Techno, can you key, uh, get your artwork slightly bit closer to the camera so that I can see? Okay, so this exercise was just to show that we are talking about one single emotion. Thank you. Thank you. I saw that. So this exercise is to essentially, um, you know, imply that we're talking about one single emotion, right? But or each of us would represent it in our own unique and different way. And that's the creative process that we're talking about. And because today, because of time, we can't spend so much on it, but we can actually, let's say, give color to it. We can add more mediums about, let's say, what is the worry monster telling you? What is it saying to you, right? When, in what situations does it come up and what does it do to you, right? So these are the two aspects about art therapy that oh, I like uh, here to tell all of you is that um, in, in the classroom or whenever you're working with children, right, there are two elements about uh, art therapy that you can carry back. One is the creative process that each individual child would express what they are feeling differently. That's the creative process. And that's the uniqueness of, of, of art therapy. Second is that the questions make a huge difference is that after the art is done, what is it that you ask them after the uh, you know art exercise is done? You ask them about what is this telling you? When are the situations when this come up? Uh, you know what happens to you when this worry monster comes in? How does the worry monster also make you feel? And very importantly, touching upon resilience, what can you do to fight this worry monster? Right? What can you do when this worry monster comes in? So. Two aspects, questions, so reflective questions at the end, and the creative process makes a huge difference, which means the instructions will also make a difference here. So now, uh, today's topic is about resilience, right? Um, using how do we introduce or talk to children about resilience building? How do we build their resilience during such kind of, uh, during such difficult times? And I think another sentence that I wanted to use for today's workshop was that it can be strength during difficult times, right? So correlating, let's say, res uh, resilience and difficult time to strength and what is it that brings about the strength? Now, before we move to what they can do, because resilience building involves uh, the protective factors of first thing is that it involves helping children build coping skills and coping resources, right? Uh, coping mechanisms and skills, uh, which are completely dependent on their own abilities as well. The second aspect that protects children during this difficult time are support systems. So talking to children about uh, you know, what is the role of support systems and in what way can people that you can ask help from can make a lot of difference in solving a problem that they find very difficult, okay? Now, uh, coming to how do you introduce or, or, or like what do you tell them when it comes to, um, you know, resilience? Like how do you talk to them about resilience? And I, I think 
simply just to put it, resilience is about bouncing back in the face of adversity. Uh, another uh, you know, way to define it would be overcoming challenges during difficult times, right? Overcoming them, learning from mistakes and learning from situations. So, and another important aspect about resilience is also, let's say, uh, I, Akansha, I hope like uh, everyone can just, I mean, whoever wants to participate can just unmute themselves and uh, tell so, us. Uh, yeah, Tanushi, what we can do is, uh, as soon as you will put up the question or something, uh, then uh, those who want to answer or those who want to speak up, they can raise show of their hand, uh, virtual okay. uh, show of hand in the reaction they can give. And then okay. we will unmute them. Okay. okay, it will be done serial wise. As soon as it will show, it will be shown in the participant okay. window, I'll be unmuting them. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, right now we are on the point of uh, how do we introduce the concept of uh, resilience to children, right? And this is coming from the fact that I've worked with a lot of children, right, in my clinical practice. And they talk about, um, when I'm speaking to them about what's bothering them before going to sleep, they will mention about everything, right? And they wouldn't have a particular word to specify it, right? But I would also tell them that, you know, what you're experiencing right now sounds like something like worry. And I asked them about, have you heard about something called worry? W-O-R-R-Y, right? And this is how I would introduce the topic of this and then bring about coping skills as to what they can do to combat that, right? So now resilience. How uh, do we introduce uh, resilience, right? And this is where I just wanted to show this. What you guys see on the screen, anybody can make their own interpretations here. What is it that you see on the screen? Okay, I am unmuting uh, Miss Anjali Singh first. Yes, Miss Anjali. Spring. Okay, okay. All okay. right. Uh, next, uh, uh, Miss Manisha. Ma yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you have muted yourself. You have to unmute. One. Yeah. I feel this kind of, this is a uh, definitely what just now somebody said it's a spring, but moreover, it's a connection or a link. Mm -hmm. A connection what? and a link to what, uh, ma'am? Uh, to like, go out, to reach to others, to seek help. Mm -hmm. Some kind of a binding or a joining. Okay. okay. Because one end is, one end I feel is held by something and the other end is uh, left loose. Mm -hmm. so it's definitely to held by something else. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, Monica Segal, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. It's a wire that is used for spiral binding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what's the quality of that? Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it is foldable. Mm -hmm. It is foldable. It can be rotated through number of pages. Yeah. So, so uh, generally this is used for spiral binding Absolutely. or for giving connections from one connector to the another mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. Yeah. Miss Mohita Gandhi yes, ma'am it's increasing in size like okay. from the place it's binded it's the spring size is small and then it's growing bigger as okay. you know, away okay. from the wanted part. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so I think, all right. Yeah. All right. And uh, the next question is that what happens to a spring when you put it under pressure? Mr. Amarnath, please go ahead. Unmuted you. Yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, we sir. can. Yes. So uh, I can feel that structure like look like a tornado. Okay, mm -hmm. I, uh, feel like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. we can say it uh, like spring also. And uh, yeah. ma'am, uh, as uh, ask if uh, that spring have some opposite reaction. Okay, if mm -hmm. we use that, then when yeah. opposite reaction also we can feel. Okay, so uh, yeah. we can relate this line only one single line with the nature also. Absolutely. I mean, uh, means uh, if we think like uh, wind, means that tornado is a very speed wind, and uh, mm -hmm. then uh, we also part of the nature. 
and uh, mm-hmm. wind also part of the nature and but uh, if without wind we cannot live uh, okay. but with wind uh, if you uh, give so much uh, pressure means uh, with the wind then uh, that can create uh, some disaster also okay. so one single line can mean so many things mm-hmm. uh, that's it ma'am okay okay thank you uh, amarnath uh, i anybody else who'd like to see it uh, who sees this from a different perspective other than just the spring or uh, let's say like a volcano that's been uh, mentioned vandita nayak ma'am you can unmute yourself yeah yeah uh, ma'am uh, when we stretch it and leave it it comes back to its original mm-hmm. position mm-hmm. yes the so which means it's adaptive right like it's also yes. adaptive yes in it's which- adjustable yeah absolutely yeah and i think somebody also said that you uh, i think amanath only that you you know you compress it you put it under pressure it also bounces back back right and uh, th- that is what right that uh, the, the the reason for introducing this was because that this can act as a metaphor right to help understand let's see what resilience is that it is like a spring that it can also bounce back that we as human beings have this quality that we can bounce back when we put under a lot of pressure right yes so this is one and anybody else can think of uh, if you were let's say interacting with children right now is there one other one. okay yes priyanka uh, apart from string it just reminded me of my old base phone wire okay ma'am can you repeat it again i am mean... uh, i told that apart from the string first mm-hmm. it was spring and second it, the thought that came to my mind was an old phone wire base phone mm-hmm. wire mm-hmm. okay we used to have such wire and your next question was what that has happened when you just put a pressure on mm-hmm. the spring it simply bounces back yeah absolutely absolutely and that was what i was looking at that it is uh, um, you know understanding that quality right that people have that ability that when things let's say uh, you know seem very grim or they seem very difficult we have the capacity of bouncing back like we have that capacity of when you're feeling absolutely sad worried scared anxious helpless you find it difficult to fight a situation you can always bounce back okay now the here is that i think this uh, uh, something for everyone to think about here is that what are the other metaphors that we can use when we are working with children to let's say represent resilience right so are there animals that you would uh, qualities in animals that you can bring about are there things from nature right i think the one thing that pops in my mind is also like a cactus in a you know desert that's also one metaphor a tree that keeps shooting up and growing as well right is that uh, it, it takes that nurturance those metaphors right so one is that to communicate and help uh, the children understand that what is resilience maybe through the work of using metaphor yeah, in, in an example to help them understand that and another thing to this was that you can that resilience is also about changing perspective is that if you shift this thing around it no longer looks like it's spiraling down you know here it looks like it's spiraling down right that's where you start is that it goes in spiral down and if you change it around it will also start looking like you're going up as well right that resilience is also about that coping with difficult situation is also about looking at the situation differently right there's a lot of studies on how the the way that we look at a particular situation right is let's say a child feels absolutely upset after uh, you know they planned something that they were going to do but it did not go as what they expected okay what is the child going to feel uh, likely going to feel in that situation let's say exam scenario uh you know a child um, studied very hard expected that this would happen but in uh, the actual reality of it the the complete opposite of the expectation happened what would the child feel at that time yes mohita ma'am uh, frustrated yes yeah angry and angry, angry. yeah uh-huh. and what would they say to themselves like what are the kind of thoughts that they would get agitated and 
-hmm. Anyone else? I think techno. Ma'am, is... your name is not mentioned there. Uh, I have unmuted you. Can you please? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hopeless. Hopeless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Jinsi Johnson. Johnson, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, I think the first reaction that a child would give is ki, why me? It only happens with me. I'll give best mm -hmm. for everything and only the reverse happens. Yeah. Universe is acting against me. Yes, yes. That happens quite a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Jinsi. I think Swarna Gita ma'am had... Uh, yeah, unmuted her. Unmuted her. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The child will feel dejected. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned something. I've not got the question. So naturally the child will get dejected. And tell that the question paper was very tough. No, they like to pass the buck, no, like putting the blame mm -hmm. on complain on something else. They will not mm -hmm. realize that it was their mistake that they had not studied everything. They'll just try to put their blame on something else. Yes, yes. And they'll but, feel dejected. Absolutely. And overall, they feel disappointed, they feel angry, they feel frustrated. They will also get thoughts about why does this happen to me? Or every time I put an effort, you know, something else happens, right? So where does resilience come in here is that, uh, and resilience in art, both of them come in here in a way that let's say you give an instruction about, let's talk about the last time that you felt that things did not go the way that you had decided or thought about. Let's draw that scenario, right? And the following question to that would be, what is it that you got to learn from that, right? So the question of asking them what they learned from the situation also gives them an alternative perspective to why does this always happen to me? Why do bad things happen to me? Right? Why don't things go as, go as planned? So the idea is you can also represent a situation, right? That has happened in the in real life, put that into art and also at the same time, ask them about what did you get to learn from this experience, right? Because this question of asking children about what they learn from this, what they learn from, let's say, the mistakes also sort of um, builds alternate perspective. And that's also one of the ideas of resilience building, right? And uh, now coming to the art exercise. So I'd like all of you, uh, and no worries at all if you don't have your colors and your, uh, you know, the, the paints, uh, the art materials you don't have. That's okay if you have a pen and paper that completely uh, works well. And the second aspect uh, of art is again the expression part of the emotion. Okay, so now here, as individuals, all of us, um, we've been in the lockdown for quite some. Uh, we've been in the lockdown for quite some time. We've felt different sort of emotions. We've gone through our own individual experiences in the past couple of months, right? So what I just want you to do is let's draw a bottle or a jar on a paper. That's all you have to do. You can make it big, you can make it small. Uh, that's up to you. You just have to draw a jar or a bottle on a paper. Okay, now that you're done drawing the uh, jar uh, or the bottle, just want you to think of all the emotions that you've been feeling lately, all the questions that you've been, uh, you know, having in your mind, any thoughts that you've been having in the mind, emotions that you've been feeling that you've been bottling up, right, over the past couple of days, over the past couple of weeks. So now within the jar or within the bottle, just want you to draw or symbolically represent or even write within this, the things, the emotions that you've been bottling up and the questions, thoughts, anything that you've been bottling up over the past couple of days. Let's spend like about five uh, minutes doing this.
So within the jar and the bottle, just put all the things that you feel that you've been bottling up, the emotions, the thoughts, anxiety, worries, even bottling up. So uh, in anybody, I, I'd, I'd like like uh, maybe like three people to just sort of uh, tell what they've drawn. Anybody would like to share? Okay, can I have Raja, uh, Raja Jeshwari? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Need fresh air to breathe without mask, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you clearly. Can you repeat? Need fresh air to breathe without mask. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, can I can yeah, I go? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. So I've written a couple of things. Uh, my husband's away, and it's just me and my kids locked up. Like we call mm -hmm. this the big boss house now. So mm -hmm. couple of things I'm feeling is loneliness. Definitely to breathe freely. We are missing that family time, freedom, just to be. Uh, with friends whenever we feel like and you know go wherever we want to uh, missing the meetups yes and uh, yeah so these are the main things that I'm missing right now and you know bottling up can't share this with kids okay 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 all right interesting point there anybody else Anita ma'am Anita Tiwari mm -hmm. yeah yes ma'am uh, I have bottled my fear, uncertainty, anxiety, sometimes thankfulness, and uh, sometimes uh, we are grateful that we are uh, still safe, don't know about future, mm -hmm. some emotions mm -hmm. we are having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been, um, so th this exercise is called bottling up, right? Like uh, exercise around bottling up. And this is again, like a metaphor that we do tend to bottle up a lot of things. Like Jinsi said, that I have been bottling up these emotions and not telling my kids about it. So similarly, the other way around, like children can experience uh, a lot of negative emotions and still bottle it up and not, you know, figure a way around what to do with them, right? So similarly, so this exercise could be a good exercise to work with children about identifying emotions, thoughts, fears, anxieties that they've been bottling up. Right? And from here, what you can actually build further is, let's say, you pick out one emotion a day, or you pick out one emotion sometimes, the one that has been overwhelming a lot, and look at expressing this emotion, right? Here, do you want to use color to, uh, you know, um, to represent that, em uh, that particular emotion, right? And express using that color, painting it out, drawing it out or sketching it out. And also along with it, figuring a way of dealing with that emotion, right? And a lot of times we do tend to bottle up in like our worry and the anxiety, right? And these are again, the emotions that uh, can not be healthy for us if we keep bottling it up, like uh, anxiety, worry, uh, let's say anger for that matter, like frustration, right? And children do feel these emotions very, very uh, often. So here is that this emotion can be that you help them understand about what is bottling up, right? And how we tend to bottle up things. What are the uh, negatives of bottling up, right? And how we need to find skills and find, uh, let's say, ways and means of coping with this, okay? And uh, this is art in terms of how we can use art with uh, you know emotional aspect of emotional expression and building coping skills. At the same time as well, we can also use the medium of stories, right? There are a lot of stories in terms of, uh, you know, this is where, um, uh, th this reminds me of a story which is called um, the coffee bean egg and the uh, potato. Have you guys heard? Uh, about anybody who's heard about this story, just raise your hand. Okay. All right. Yeah, 11 participants raised your hand. Okay, so this, this story of coffee bean egg and uh, the, the, the coffee bean egg and potato, the reason why I find this very apt um, for resilience, right, is that 
the three things, which is the coffee, the egg, and uh, the coffee, the potato, and the um, uh, the coffee bean egg and the potato right so all of them they have three of them have separate qualities right when you put them into boiling water and the way they come out of the boiling water is very different potato becomes mushy uh, egg becomes very hardened coffee doesn't it only changes the water right so i find this story to be a very good means of helping children understand about number one about the unique qualities that each of them possess, right? And how these qualities, how they uh, can use these qualities in overcoming difficult challenge. And here the difficult challenge is the, the boiling hot water. So you put all the three things in the boiling hot water, each of them come out differently and each of them cope with it differently, right? And this is where, again, the question of what are the qualities that you possess, right? Uh, that helps you deal with this difficult situation as well. So this is where maybe let's say an art exercise about a superhero exercise, right? Or even asking them to make a self portraiture of all the strength that they possess could work really well. Okay, because this helps them identify their own positive qualities. This is one uh, role of a story. Another role of a story could be is that choose and pick a story which has a very strong main character, right? Like a story, a hero story for that matter. Like a, a lot of time these days, children would relate to superhero stories, right? Where there's a very strong main character. So what you do in this stories is the, the important aspect is again, what you ask them by the end of the story, right? First is that what are the qualities that this hero possessed that uh, helped in the times of need? So similarly, if you were the hero in the story, what would you do differently? Okay. Can't hear you, ma'am. Can you hear me now? You are audible. You are you are clearly audible. Okay. That what is it that you would do differently if you were the hero in the story? Or what are the qualities about you, right? That you also sometimes possess that is very similar to this hero as well. So this is how you can use storytelling, even story and art both together as a means of working on strength building in order to build resilience in uh, children as well. Okay, and going to the third part of resilience in uh, with working with children is also the role of support, right? Like the role of people that children can help um, that, that they can ask help from. And I just uh, make this thing for all of us to just sort of see that we can use the similar uh, things with children also when working with them. Is that, uh, okay, so what do you see in this? Uh, okay, again, I, this is the first part. This is the three parts of the story. Okay, so this is one. You can ignore this part, the writing part. So you can just sort of write down for yourself on the paper, like what you see, what's happening in this uh, flashcard. And you can pardon my drawing. I was actually trying to draw an ant over here, but it ended up looking like this. So yeah, okay, so this is one. Now the second part to the flashcard is this. So I've written over here, since 15 minutes, here I've written after one hour. So this is the second flashcard. What do you see in this? Now, the third part of the story is this. Okay. Anybody who hasn't um, previously uh, spoken or like, would you like to share what you see and the, the story that 
is uh, sort of coming through in this uh, flashcards. Okay, let's take uh, Miss Sonal. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, for the picture one, I uh, understood like the little one, the little uh, the creature is trying to achieve a big goal, which is uh, quite hard, uh, seems quite hard, but it is trying, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, from the second picture, uh, what I observed is uh, after trying a lot, it got tired or got disappointed. And then third one, like the, uh, the uh, means when uh, not one, not single uh, uh, person is working, uh, we are working together. If we work together, so it is a chance of achieving the goal. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sonal. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else also would like to share? Or is yeah. it the same? As the Ruby, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, as I understood from the story, ma'am, <clears throat> mm -hmm. first of all, it is seen that uh, Ant is just pushing a stone. So mm -hmm. Ant is, uh, I mean to say tired, means after pushing. And mm -hmm. then the second one, it is uh, seen that the Ant became exhausted. Means totally mm -hmm. he was exhausted after such, because the Ant was alone, ma'am. And mm -hmm. finally we see a teamwork. When mm -hmm. he finally calls his friends, and he started to push uh, the uh, uh, means the stone. He was successful that way. Means according okay. to me, I felt that. Ah, thank you so much. I think that was uh, uh, nicely put in terms of teamwork and asking for help. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Another third person would like Sunita, to. Ma yeah. uh, Ma'am, good evening, you all. Uh, seeing the mm -hmm. first picture is. Uh, that uh, ki ant is uh, putting uh, hard uh, effort, hai na? Bahut effort kar rahi hai, but uh, not successful. Uh, second picture again showing that ki after putting effort, uh, she got tired, exhausted, mm -hmm. and uh, unsuc became unsuccessful because she mm -hmm. is alone. Hai na? Work ke liye. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, uh, when uh, together, uh, many ants, uh, they started putting uh, that okay. stone there. Uh, the stone fell down and uh, they yeah. became successful. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I think to uh, others who want to answer, another thing is that what if now we change instead of saying that uh, this is something, what if we change this into a, uh, what if this, this round huge thing that the ant is pushing is a representation of all the prop of problems that we face in our life, right? So anybody would like to retell this story again, but by using the word problem. Charu has raised the hand. Charu, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, see, first of all, uh, if you change that stone, that is a problem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, students, uh, in his life, uh, so many problems are there he or she is facing. Mm -hmm. Now, in the second one, after certain uh, real hard work, he got exhausted when he sees that no i'm not getting the fruitful results what i am searching for mm -hmm. now what is the third picture showed the group of ants now these are not group of ants if we see we are the family the family which actually holds together that students emotion ahead i am with you so this uh, actually gives the child or uh, that is a metaphor child mm -hmm. yeah. uh, boosting in the energy to go ahead again. So mm -hmm. this is what I actually uh, see from your story. Okay. Thank you, Charu, ma'am. Now, yes. So the when you change this into, you first start with, you just ask them to describe what they see. Then you ask them to see that, okay, if this is a problem that the ant is pushing in the first one, she's pushing, right? She still keeps on pushing it for one hour, right? This is just to represent that there are some problems that we find difficult to overcome just by our own self, right? And what do we need to do at that time? Here is that, I think that will be the moral of the story, like that, that will be the learning from the story is that we sometimes need to ask for help, right? The support systems in our life, the people whom we can ask for help, 
right? And this is where maybe we can do another artwork of asking them to draw their pillars, right? Draw the people in their life that from whom that they can ask help from, or they can just simply write it as well, or even identify, right? The story can just help in helping them identify the people or whoever is it that they can ask for help. And that at times when some problems are difficult to work alone just by ourselves, we need to ask for help, right? And this is how we build, keep the protective factor of, um, you know, of building resilience in children as well, right? So this uh, activity was just to illustrate the idea of support system, that how our family, friends, or teachers, uh, you know, counselors in school, they form as a part of resilience building, right? Because asking for help is a form of resilience building. So this was one. And the last part of today's uh, session is the element of also learning how to regulate, let's say, or still keeping hope, okay? So this is where, again, I'd like all of you to take another sheet of paper again. And if anybody of you have colors in this, you can actually uh, keep uh, use the colors here, right? But or just simply let's make our uh, happy place. Can we spend about let's say three or four minutes just making our happy place? Or uh, first, if anybody you find it difficult to just directly make it, how about we visualize our happy place? Okay, so. I think let, let's drop everything that we're doing, the paper and the pen. Just want you all to close your eyes. Can we just do that? Okay. Just want you all to close your eyes. And I'd like you to visualize your happy place. A place, a situation, a time in your life where you feel happy while thinking about it, you all that also makes you feel calm, relaxed. It makes you feel optimistic. In your mind, I want you to visualize that place, what it looks like. If it's an image that you're building, what's the color of that happy place? Is there a sound to the happy place? Now I want you to put yourself inside that happy place. Observe and notice how you're feeling at that time in that place. What are you doing in that happy place? How are you spending your time in that? And if you would want to share this happy place with someone else, who would that be? Who would you include within this happy place? Now, very importantly, I want you to also think about, also notice and observe how is this happy place making you feel, right? If you want to name it differently, what is the name that you would like to give to this place, if not the happy place? Now, whenever you're ready, you can just open your eyes and draw that happy place and just write a name to it.
let's just take about like a minute and uh, just draw that happy place, what it looks like. And if there's anyone who'd like to raise your hand again and uh, I think share a bit about what you've just made. Okay. Akansha, could you help me with uh, moderating this? Sure. So, first we'll take uh, Miss Rashmi Pathak. Yes, Rashmi, ma'am. Yes, the scene of early in the morning, Bank of Gangas and uh, Havan and Mantras. This moment is my ple most uh, pleasant moment. How does this make you feel, uh, ma'am? When you, what are the feelings associated with this? I am. Uh, there is no word. <laughs> I express mm -hmm. my fear. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Rashmi, ma'am. Uh, same people sing the uh, song, uh, classical music, and uh, some people uh, practice yoga. The whole scene is much pleasure for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we can take Suvarna, ma'am. We haven't taken your question yet. Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Uh, my place, Joy, is uh, it's a beautiful sun, uh, sun rising uh, okay, morning when the birds, when, when I hear bird uh, chirping sound. It really gives me a soothing, calm mind, and my my day is really it's full of energy. So I would like to have that uh, type of uh, environment every every time and the, and mm -hmm. everywhere. The sound, which is there is no there is no pollution, nothing, and bird shipping and humming sound, and and again as uh, my colleague one of my colleagues said, shloka mantra everywhere, just this chanting goes off. That really mm -hmm. gives a calmness to the mind, to the body yeah. also. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mohita, ma'am, she has been taking an active part of this uh, session. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I also agree, like Swarna, ma'am. Uh, I also feel that uh, sunrise and hearing birds chirping and um, I was imagining myself in a place near a river, a small cottage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, near a river where I could, uh, you know, hear the sound of the river flowing down. And that that actually, um, like uh, four or five years back, we have traveled to Germany and I have stayed in a place, in a, in a countryside I have stayed like for a few mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the places which was, you know, not highly populated, very less pollution. Mm -hmm. and extremely beautiful place so when you thought mm -hmm. asked me to think about something i was you know Thank transported you. to that place only because yeah. every day morning when i used to open my windows there was no noise nothing because it was countryside in that place also mm -hmm. so whenever i used to open my window i could only hear the voice of flowing water and i could as soon as i you know used to step out i could see ducks around my house so it was extremely beautiful so i was just mm -hmm. transported to that place yeah. Thank uh, you. Anita, and... ma'am, if we, if we can take Anita, ma'am's question. She was uh, drawing really well. I 
I wanted to know what she was drawing. Yeah, okay. Anita Tiwari, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, are you able to see the drawing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The face uh, I had given the name that is Glowy. Okay. All right. And, uh, I had included my family, my friends when I was mm -hmm. happy, and uh, I become ha happy when I express my all the feelings, whether it is anxiety, depression, frustration, or mm -hmm. happiness. Mm -hmm. my poetry if i'm able to write the poetry that time i feel very happy mm -hmm. it could be uh, uh, that uh, if i'm able to write it uh, whether in a solitary place or along mm -hmm. with me it doesn't matter to me okay okay so thank you so much uh, anita ma'am for sharing this and everybody else who shared right and i, I would have loved to hear what all of you had um, you know uh, what all of you had made all about that but the thing is that i think with the time aspect but i'm sure uh, i think we've all been able to like uh, take away from from this exercise is that uh, that if we ourselves can also find that happy place, right? I'm sure we just need to help the children also find that happy place. And maybe, and, and they can definitely find that, right? If for them, maybe if not a happy place, they can call it completely different, like how Anita ma'am calls it glowy, right? So you can also give it a different name. So here, the idea is also think about where is it uh, that, uh, you know, or that I could use this with children so that they would feel um, that it would be of help to them as well, right? So that's one aspect. And the reason for um, bringing about this exercise, right, was for the aspect that it does bring in a sense of hope as well, right? You can definitely change this around and make it about hope as well. What do you see in a hopeful future, right? So that because resilience is also about building that hope, you, and you can Again, it's the creative process that you can make a world that you uh, that that is essentially yours, right? You can make a world with people, uh, with resources, with your own strength, with your own ability that makes you feel positive during this uh, difficult time, right? So this was the um, whole exercise that we've done is that we've we've started the whole session with uh, understanding what resilience is, right? And I'm sure all of you can. Um, you, know, you work with uh, children, you know them a lot better, right? And how they respond, what they do, and how they themselves can be so creative. I think it's just that sometimes they just need that support and then they, you know, blossom on their own way as well, right? So that's one aspect that we started with helping uh, that, that when we look at working res on helping children understand resilience to art, it could art can really help in helping them understand that there is something called resilience, right? You know, we find it very comforting when we know that there is a word for what we feel, that there's a word for the way we experience that reduces confusion, right? Second is uh, the important aspect of expressing, right? And through the use of stories, through the use of even comics for that matter, how do you identify uh, strength? How do you identify individual coping skills? Right, that reinforce the fact that you can take control, that you have those abilities that help you bounce back. The third aspect being the importance of support system, of asking help when you're feeling confused. This is a very important component of, um, of resilience building. Right? And the fourth one being that when things become very anxiety provoking or when situations become tough, we can essentially do like a mental vacation, right? You have that power in your mind in order to create a place for yourself that keep, makes you stay hopeful as well. So these were like the four elements that I wanted to touch upon. And that uh, when we're looking at infusing art uh, therapy into let's say resilience building, the main component is uh, that what is it with children that you want to work on today? Even within resilience, there's so many components to it. Determination, grit, perseverance. Um, you, you want to work with coping skills, right? You pick up an exercise around that. And then you follow it up with uh, the questions that you ask that makes a lot of difference. And the kind of toolkit that you can use with them is, let's say, uh, drawing for that matter, metaphorical representation symbolicism, I think children understand that, like symbolic languages, they understand very well. Uh, you can use videos to also using stories as well, like short stories around this. Uh, so yes, so I'll be happy to take questions right now if anybody has any questions. 
and be happy to answer them. Thank you, Tanushri. It was already an interactive session. It was very good session. I hope uh, each and every educator join in uh, have uh, enjoyed it and have gained a very like have taken some part of yeah. And you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can unmute yourself. I want yes, ma'am. I want to show this art integrated for the students and for myself. I made this, ma'am. When I disappointed, I will write the some negative points and positive mm -hmm. points mm -hmm. for innovative me. Yeah. See, and you guys are already so creative. So. To work yeah. With. yeah. Okay. Okay. This is for children. This is for the students. Yes, ma'am. And for mm -hmm. me also, when I feel. Uh, some like that disorder so I, I will write the negative points and then the positive point then i will do the work according to that it's easy to understand the children's psychology also ma'am absolutely. absolutely it can help in our work thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am so uh, we have 8 minutes left with us uh, we will be doing a q and a round and uh, uh, we will be inviting miss tanushri again if uh, it would it would be great if she will join us again sometime uh, in uh, coming months like uh, for our because uh, we have i have personally enjoyed it and i hope that we still we have 994 participant with us so it and on facebook also we are live there also everyone is watching miss tanushri so it was a really great session let's start with the q and a so the rule of the Q&A is you have to raise the hand and uh, uh, I'll be uh, unmuting uh, one by one and uh, then you can ask your question with the in starting with the introduction and then you can go with the question. Yeah, uh, Miss Archana. Ma'am, you can unmute yourself. Miss Archana. Miss Nikita. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am here. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Miss Sangma, ma'am. You have conducted this session. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to congratulate you. And uh, my question is as I'm a special educator. So mm -hmm. um, as the educative child, Consistently use dark shades, gray or black, for example. So we interpret it as going through some trauma or like, uh, any uh, kind of uh, negative feelings. So can you just tell me it is necessary or it is like uh, not a necessary thing if she is using consistently dark shades in her drawing? If this is a case of trauma or something and what what it is. Uh, see, uh, the, the whole subject uh, in art about interpreting children's drawing, right? Like uh, that external person or the person who's working with is interpreting the um, uh, the drawing, right? Uh, is, is also very subjective, right? Because I think uh, you've been noticing that drawing for quite some time. So you find that pattern, right? It mm -hmm. could be a good idea to just maybe talk to the child, uh, you know, ask them like, talk to them about what is it that they've made, right? And that you've noticed this very frequently, right? So I think to know this about, um, uh, to instead, let's say, bring it up with them, right? And ask them that you've noticed this, or can you tell me about what this is, right? So that uh, we don't necessarily need to first begin by making an inference that it's trauma, right? Because uh, a child could have drawn it based on, if it's not a personal experiences that the child has drawn, it could be something that they've seen, uh, you know, something that could they could have watched, something that they could have just seen somewhere else, right? So unless and until, I think the whole personal experience of like draw, representing a personal experience doesn't come in, I think we don't have to infer that it is about trauma, right? We mm -hmm. can instead ask the child to verbalize of what they have drawn, right? So that's what I would suggest actually, actually the thing is actually um i had one student mm -hmm. consistently using dark shades but mm -hmm. i have observed him um for one or two months 
but there mm -hmm. there was no sign of any trauma nothing but he completely mm -hmm. used those colors in her drawing i wanted i really wanted he used some kind of bright colors happy colors but he never used those colors so yeah it, it could it could definitely be the child's ego syncrasies as well like right, like that that's the color that they like or that's the interest that they have so it could be an indicator of that also that the child has this particular uh, you know uh, indicator and i'm also guessing that because you work with a, a special population as well like the uh, you know the the, pers the the temperament or the interest of the child could also be very uh, different that way as well right not as similar as the neurotypical population as well so i'm, I'm guessing that could also have been a factor there as well yeah thank you so much for answering my query and i'm really sorry i took much time <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. Uh, next question from Archana. Miss Archana, ma'am. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Go ahead with the question. Yes, ma'am. I'm Archana. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think Archana. Ma'am, you are not audible. There, uh, there is definitely. There is some... there should include. This art integrated uh, teaching learning process, but at the same time, you know what happens is uh, most of the time we are uh, just uh, back into running with the syllabus. You know? So during those times, it becomes very much difficult to carry on with these things. I wanted to uh, ask that when should we get uh, into uh, this process, uh, running with our syllabus? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think that's absolutely a valid concern to have. Like, I do understand that I think, um, uh, you know, that you have your own responsibilities, right? Like your own uh, roles and responsibilities within the classroom, and then you go with the set uh, goals as well, uh, when, when you're starting a curriculum as well. I think this can be just start of the uh, aspect that with the lockdown, right, especially in this particular time that we are in, it's very necessary that we do make that space for students, maybe even 30 minutes to one hour, uh, you know, once a week, where we get them to do an art-based engagement, right, so that they feel connectedness to even to the peers, right, like I, students are entering a new classroom without having even met their peers. So this is where art could come in, right? It's not like each time that we need to have this on a daily basis, but time to time we can definitely include it, right? I think it's it's about taking that uh, the decision there, right? And at times when let's say you don't have a special time where you can actually in bring this about. Uh, so as teachers, you are role models, right? So even let's say anecdotal stories at times in between, or even um, certain uh, uh, things that you find can work really well when you're teaching something, a particular subject, and you find that, uh, let's say a metaphor and example can work really well. I think those are some times that you can infuse it. Maybe in a five minute break time, you can do the happy days exercise. It could uh, you know, have a difference on the children mood, right? Because whenever a child feels, let's say, uh, whenever we have, we experience positive emotions, we also tend to comply. We also tend to perceive uh, things much better as well. So I think maybe those are some ways that we can vary and work with this. But yeah. Thank you. I hope this helps, Sachin. Yeah. Uh, so last question we'll take, uh, Miss Poonima. Yeah, Poonima, ma'am. You can actually, ma'am. Uh, actually, ma'am, we are unable to join the session because of increased number of participants. The last five min five minutes before we have just joined. So, uh, please, uh, uh, can you do us a favor for uh, that? You can share your recording uh, to us on our e email so that we can just go through the presentations. Sure, ma'am. Ma'am, we as we are live on Facebook also. So on uh, Facebook also, you can uh, on our page you can visit and uh, uh, watch the video as well as we'll share the link uh, with the with the principals and they'll be share, sharing with you too. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So much. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining. As uh, we promised uh, to Ms. Tanushri that uh, we'll be uh, doing the session till 6. So, uh, and it's a 6, uh, six o'clock sharp. We are uh, uh, like at the right time we have over, but still we, have, uh, we are having like, many questions. 
we'll be taking these questions uh, in our next sessions um, or you can mail us and we will connect uh, with um, ms tanushri and she'll uh, surely be answering those thank you ms tanushri thank you so much thank you for being a uh, um, thank you for uh, uh being a part of this session thank you so much thank you all the teachers and all the educators joined us thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you